The future of the Murdoch family's control of News Corp was at the heart of the company's shareholder meeting today. Proxy firms like ISS and Glass Lewis have demanded big changes at the top, with ISS even calling for Rupert Murdoch's departure. Glass Lewis Chief Policy Officer Bob McCormick joins us now. And first of all, all of the directors were reelected after all that. Mm. What's your reaction to this? Well, it's clearly no surprise, given the voting control of the Murdochs of 40 percent and the public support of um, Saudi Prince and other 7 percent. So it was going to be a real stretch for any director not to get reelected. But I think the real key will be what is the vote against of the non-affiliated shareholders? And that Still, remains to be seen. It was, it was quite contentious. Absolutely. Uh, and Rupert himself was a bit combative. Well, I think he, uh, you know, played to character. Uh, he's got a long history of being a combative person. Um, that's maybe part of the success of the company. Um, but I think Chelos shouldn't be surprised that he was uh, even a bit defensive about the performance of the company. Now, what exactly are you guys recommending? I, I know up to this point you haven't uh, recommended that Rupert himself step down. That's who right. should keep their jobs and who should? We looked at the board. There's 15 members, and we said, all right, who's the least independent? Because there's going to be, there are some independent members, but so you know, whose independence is the most compromised? Well, clearly his two sons, and then you have the insiders, the executives who report to him, basically count on him for his job. So those are the people that had the most conflicts. So we looked at that, and we decided that six of the directors should step down. Now, these are recommendations, and shareholders will end up voting as they will, but really we looked at who should step down. Now, when it comes to Rupert Murdoch, we, we looked at that as well, but he would be uh, the only remaining Rupert, uh, the only remaining uh, family member on the board. He is the largest holder, 12%, uh, economic control, 40% voting. He is the founder, he is the CEO, and the performance has been pretty good. So it's hard to argue with ejecting him at this point unless there's more evidence that he was more involved in some of the egregious practices. But his children are a different story, you're saying? Absolutely. You know, it particularly goes back to also to the succession planning. You know, is someone who's, you know, just going to be in sort of the next CEO just because they share the same last name with the current CEO chairman, um, or is it going to be run like an actual public company? We select the most um, uh, experienced, the, the, the best candidate for the job. And when you have two sons, um, particularly one who is implicated at least in some of the most egregious scandals, it really raises concerns about whether this is the right person, not just to be on the, on the board, but if this is sort of the heir apparent to be the next CEO, then that raises, I think, very serious concerns from a shareholder perspective. Bob, you give investors advice on how to vote their proxies. What's an investor to do when the company doesn't care what uh, the investors think? Well, uh, you, you sort of you know, face that challenge when you buy into a company like um, News Corp. Now, the next step would be, does the company respond? If not, then the next step would be sort of the nuclear option of a proxy contest. We actually submit your own candidates for election to the board. Those uh, potential uh, candidates would try to separate the chairman and CEO role, so provide some actually independent oversight on the part of the board. So th there's relatively, relatively little to do at this point other than the vote against. If the company doesn't respond, then there's sort of the nuclear option, like I said. And that is something that we've seen at other dual-class companies like New York Times. So is that going to happen here? It really depends on the response of the company. You know, when the company has a long history of flouting shareholder will, when they first incorporated in the U.S., they adopted a poison pill, they faced immediate shareholder uh, action in terms of a lawsuit. So, uh, however, I think given the countervailing forces of the investigations in the U.K. in particular, but also in the U.S., that the optics of not responding, I think, would look really bad for not just shareholders, but also regulators. So quickly, how do you expect this? To play out. I think a significant chunk of the non-affiliated shareholders will vote against. Now, whether that's going to be even 50 percent is really difficult to say, but I think a good 25 to 30 percent of shareholders are going to say, no, we don't want the, some of these directors. We want more independent representation. All right. Bob McCormick of Glass Lewis, thanks so much for joining us here. My pleasure. On Bloomberg West.